call this a session, but this is actually a game, and all of you play a very important role. Who here in our audience has seen American Idol on TV at least once before? OK, then you know what your role is. Um, welcome to Perfect Pitch. We have four contestants, each a science and tech entrepreneur chosen from 100 or so nominees. Um, each will present a perfect pitch uh, for venture capitalists. Venture capitalists include all of you in the audience, put on your imaginary venture capitalist hats, and our panel of esteemed judges. At the end of it, you all will have the opportunity to vote on who our winner will be. But first, let me introduce you to our celebrity judges. <laughs> <laughs> um, musician and also business guy, Warren Buffett, <laughs> chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, Kathy Coughlin, who has not yet uh, launched her music career, but is the global marketing officer of AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Gao, who is a venture capitalist with Excel Partners. <laughs> and Erica Sheik, who is the chief brand officer of Care.com, which is the sponsor of our MPW Entrepreneur Program. <laughs> now the rules. Each entrepreneur gets five minutes to pitch. Going over counts against you, so don't, guys. Um, each judge will then give feedback. Um, and your job, my judges, is to help our audience think critically about the pitches they will hear. We'll vote for a winner at the end. Without any further ado, let me introduce our first entrepreneur, Jessica Banks, co-founder of Rock Paper Robot. Wasn't supposed to start yet. <laughs> Can they redo it? Oh, I think they're supposed to read. That. Sorry. Should I and say? Yeah. Time. Go. Go. Oh. Hi, I'm Jessica Banks. I'm co founder and head of product at Rock Paper Robot, an engineering and design firm that sits at the intersection of furnishings, technology, and art. At RPR, we apply sophisticated mechanics to the notion of traditionally static furniture to create transformable and reactive objects. Our products increase the versatility and the personalization of residential and commercial spaces. As a formally trained roboticist with advanced degrees from MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab, I think I graduated in the 27th grade, uh, I am responsible for engineering, inventing, and designing our collection. This collection includes both aspirational and now more accessible consumer products. For example, Gleam is expensive. It's a robotic chandelier that expands and contracts, uh, changing its, what it lights in response to uh, things that happen in the world. Also aspirational is our, most product, is our most popular product, this levitating table called Float. Those cubes contain magnets that repel each other, so the whole table compresses and bounces back as you push on it. Float sales have generated the cash flow we needed to bootstrap our business since we formally launched 11 months ago. So as designers, we identify lifestyle pain points, and as engineers, we deliver solutions. Lately, we've become acutely aware of exponentially increasing urbanization, greatly due to millennials entering the prime renting age and downsizing baby boomers. These, these trends have influenced architecture and culture in the form of micro apartments and co-working environments that demand smarter use of interior spaces like versatile furniture. This furniture also applies to urban professionals who are increasingly working from home. Our latest invention squarely addresses these challenges and trends. Slide is a variable length, fully retractable surface that can function as a shelf, desk, or a table for up to eight people. It stores flat on the wall when not in use. It's not just a space-saving solution, but actually it allows people to live bigger. We are currently finalizing the uh, proof of concept engineering and filing patents. We've already actually seen a lot of customer and market validation around Slide, even though it's still in development. We have up to uh, pre-orders of up to 500 pieces from an uh, international real estate developer 
the main distributor for the New York Micro Apartments projects wants to put it in seven showrooms. We're being courted by distributors who want to sell our product overseas, and our submission of Slide was awarded Popular Choice Finalist in the New York's Next Top Makers competition, sponsored by the NYC Economic Development Corporation. So we're in a big transition period. Up till now, we've used our aspirational products as marketing tools to build brand traction, credibility, and a following through press, online sales platforms, and awards. And we've recently become one of the inspiring small businesses featured on American Express's Open Forum campaign. Now we are leveraging this traction to transform into and transition into a broader market. Our business model. Well, basically, we make awesome things and we sell them. Uh, <laughs> RPR, but this is a really important time because RPR is part of a manufacturing revival due to rapid prototyping technologies, social media, and online sales platforms that allow small businesses to scale product uh, without the overhead and, and cumbersome infrastructure that, of big corporations. This means we can continue to invent and prototype and test in-house while all, also maintaining control of quality, marketing, and sales just like with our aspirational products. But now we get to outsource our fabrication to local and domestic manufacturers so we can expand our collection while staying agile enough to iterate and innovate quickly. These financial projections are based on traction from Float and also expert input and, research and market research from uh, around our slide table. While all revenue is now generated from our aspirational products, the goal is to generate the majority of our revenue from high volume productions. Then we can continue to develop and manufacture new products in parallel um, for both markets. So we are currently um, self-sustained and self-funded. Over the next six months, we will be doing product testing, acquiring safety certifications, sourcing and, and vetting uh, production partners and service vendors, and launching campaigns to build market anticipation. Our team is strong. My business partner is an award-winning art director. We have complementary ah. skills. And thank you so much, Jessica. Don't move. Let's give her a big hand for going first. That's hard. Thank you. Okay, moving to our judges. And by the way, if you want to hear the end of it, she'll be outside afterwards. Um, Warren, what do you think? Well, this, this is not a format I've seen before. When, they, when <laughs> people come to me, they usually come for money, not for <laughs> reports. Uh, no, I, 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 I would say this. The one thing I would, uh, piece of advice I would give is the world will change as you go through any business. And uh, when we started Berkshire in 1965, had no idea, you know, exactly how it would turn out over time. So the, the main thing, keep listening to the customer, keep listening to your partners, keep listening to everybody, and don't get ever hooked totally into a, a single plan that you think has to go from point A to point B to point C, because it will change over time, but you'll make the right decisions. <laughs> Thank you. Kathy. So I think you did a terrific job, uh, as Warren said, listening to your customers because you could feel how you've taken those insights from customers and infused it into the product design. So I'd like just to learn more or hear more later about your pricing. I don't know if this is a high end or low end or kind of what segment of the market you're going for. Okay. Um, Thank you. I Teresa. I thought you did a great job starting out by telling your story about why you were the right authentic entrepreneurs to start this business what the market context is around why there's a market need today. And of course, the beautiful visuals of the amazingly designed products were terrific. And my only last piece of advice would be make sure you leave time to ask for the money. Um, since that's what done. So tell, make, sure you, make sure you have time to tell us how much money you want to raise. Um, oh, can I say something? Mm, nope, sorry. <laughs> I wish I could let you. Erica. Uh, so I, I noticed you didn't talk about the price piece on the aspirational product, and I, my mind kind of went to what are those kind of gateway drug products that you're going to reach a broader audience to actually build your brand. Right. Um, Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jessica, again, for going first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up, uh, Hannah Chung, co-founder of Sproutel.
Hello, my name is Hannah Chung. I am the co-founder and chief creative officer at Sprout Tell. When I first met little Angelo, I was surprised to learn how hard it is to live with type 1 diabetes. Angelo pricks his fingers and receives insulin up to eight times a day. His parents wake up at 3 a.m. every night to make sure he's feeling fine. And Angelo feels alone because he has no one to share his struggles with. Kids like Angelo also have an abnormally high health care cost from having events like going to the emergency room. But these can be prevented through better education. At Sprout Health, we help children with chronic illnesses like Angelo learn and cope through play. Our empathetic robots utilize a combination of em uh, embedded hardware, artificial intelligence, and a software platform with an emphasis in game-based learning. We are starting with type 1 diabetes and expanding to autism and asthma to bring better care to homes and save costs in healthcare. Our first product, Jerry the Bear, is a new best friend for kids with type 1 diabetes. Jerry, how are you feeling today? I feel great! Children train Jerry for the All-Stars game, and by doing so, they learn how to manage blood glucose levels, recognize symptoms, and maintain their healthy diet. In each of the six levels, kids learn a new diabetes lesson by helping Jerry learn a new sport. And these levels can be unlocked when you take care of Jerry well. We're aiming for kids between three and seven years old. Jerry's software is upgraded monthly with relevant information to a child's learning stage, and parents can view their progress. Our curriculum is proven by educators, doctors, and families. Jerry has been iterated over 28 times in the past year and a half, and our 350 expert kits tested and evaluated our bears. And they required me to wear this bear suit many times. <laughs> we are selling directly to families with a price point of $249. In fact, we are shipping our limited run of 250 bears next month, and we already pre-sold 65%. Our sales approach is very community focused, and we do so by working with some amazing organizations, such as the Build a Bear Foundation, donating our bears to diabetes camps across the nation, Children with Diabetes, the largest online community for families with type 1 diabetes, and the Diabetes Care and Education Group, leading network of educators and who endorsed Jerry the Bear. But our long term plan is to have Jerry reimbursed by insurance companies because we see the value in getting Jerry on the moment when you're, you are diagnosed at a hospital. To make this happen, uh, to make this happen next year, we are uh, setting up the outcomes-based research study now by talking to several leading diabetes hospitals in the nation and one of the three biggest insurers. When we meet our families, they call us the bear people, and I'm the mama bear. Uh, my expertise is in mechanical engineering and design. I graduated from Northwestern University last year. I previously founded Design for America, a nationwide network of students using design to solve local social problems. With my co-founder and CEO, Aaron, and Andrew together, we have the know-how in robotics and design, and we get how kids learn and play. We have gathered a lot of buzz as us as entrepreneurs to the type of impact that we are creating with Jerry, but what makes us different is our passion. From my father's family having type 2 diabetes, uh, Aaron diagnosed with um, human growth hormone deficiency when he was young, and Andrew living with type 1 diabetes since he was 7 years old, what we do strikes home for us. We are leveraging type 1 diabetes, which is a small niche market, to hone and develop our product. Our goal is to own this market, understand how kids learn through a robotics medium, and bring our model to autism, asthma, and even obesity to serve the 32 million children with chronic illnesses in the United States. At Sprout Tell, we are bringing better care to homes and save costs in healthcare. But what we are really excited about is bringing happiness to kids like Angelo to live longer and healthier lives. Um, we are so excited, and if you guys are excited as we are uh, and want to hop on board, please come talk to me after. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anna. Don't go anywhere. Bear, don't go anywhere. Warren. The Papa Bear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I thought it was an extremely good presentation. I, 
the financial aspects of it, mm -hmm. uh, you only had four or five minutes, but I'd like to hear more about, about what kind of capital would be needed to roll the, the, develop this and, 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 and the financial potential. Thank you very much. Sorry, no. Okay, okay. Kathy. <laughs> See me after the show. <laughs> Definitely do that. Um, <laughs> Hannah, I loved your vision. I, you, you're painting a really big vision, and I loved how you say we're starting here. Mm -hmm. I love the marriage of technology and uh, with with this this um, human um, problem that you. So you've married the humanity with with the technology. Your audience is is going to respond because that's how they're communicating today. Um, like Warren, I was I was interested maybe on the on the other side of it, which was the go to market, how, how are you gonna get kind of mass adoption or, or um, especially at that price point, I was a little bit concerned about that. I can tell you Great, all right, <laughs> Teresa. I, um, I thought that uh, th your stories as three founders about why you made sense as a team and why this speaks to you personally was amazing and like what the other judges have said, I really appreciated your vision for starting with something and then expanding. I would guess with your background and the amount of information and data that you're collecting, it would have been nice for me to hear even for phase two with the data that you're collecting from the various, from the bears and the other devices, what can you do with that both to make your business more interesting in terms of having an ongoing relationship with your customers, but also what you might do with that data to feed back to the research universities as a way to get unfair distribution. Thank you, and Erica. Well, as, as a mom with a child with asthma, I can definitely see how important something like this would be in helping children um, deal with the, both the logistical and the emotional aspect of, of a chronic illness. Um, I think that the challenge with kids is that they move through toys pretty fast. So how do you actually build the experience and the emotional connection, like Build-A-Bear does, um, between the child and the toy to make sure that it actually works the way you intend it to work. Um, I love this scalability of it, and I can see it moving into, you know, the childhood obesity and all sorts of other. But it would be it would be nice if your presentation um, dealt with that engagement platform as well. Thank you very much, judges and Hannah. For a hand. All right. Next up, we have Anika John, co-founder of Mashton. Anika. Good morning. Mashin is a computer vision company, and our intellectual property is applicable to radiology, physical therapy, education, a variety of fields. But we're focusing on food technology because we believe that our current product is the fastest way for us to get to profitability. My name is Anika John, and I'm CEO of Mashin. I was previously a corporate development executive at Bloom Energy. My co-founder and CTO, Mukul Dunkar, is an internationally recognized computer vision specialist. His previous experience includes Toyota's humanoid robotics program and Bell Alcatel Labs. Together, we're assembling a world-class team of engineers with expertise from Microsoft, Facebook, the Indian Institute of Technology, and of course, Toyota. This is the problem that we're solving. The inefficiency here is due to the cashier checkout. And this, it's our solution. We do two things that have never been done before. First, we're able to scan multiple objects simultaneously. And second, we're able to scan very complex objects and recognize them, like prepackaged items. Think pasta, salads, soups, even stews. Remember when you had to wait in line in traffic to pay the toll? And now, we have EasyPass. Mashin is the EasyPass of checkout. Here's how our product works in a cafeteria setting. And here's how our product works in a coffee shop setting. No more waiting in line to pay if all you want are the to-go items. I'll tell you about the business model for cafeterias for this presentation. One of our systems replaces the to total cost of employment for three cashiers. Once we pay the upfront cost of our technology, we'll be able to sell each product for six times our production cost. Our customers, the food service companies, they get a 30 to 50% return on investment within a three-year payback period. As you can see by this graph, 
everyone makes money. Companies have tried using barcode scanning, RFID, pre-ordering software to solve this problem. Barcodes can only scan one item at a time. Think grocery store checkout, very frustrating. RFID is expensive, and you can't put it on unpackaged items like soups and salads. Pre-ordering software has not experienced a wide adoption because we as consumers, we like to see our options before choosing what we want to eat for lunch. But Mastion requires no change in customer behavior. It's fast, it's easy, it saves our customers money, but there's also data to be gathered and analyzed here. Would you like to track your calories? We can do that. How about pictures of your lunches for the last year? We can do that too. How about a histogram chart of the color of how much green you had for the past three months? That's easy. Human resource departments love us, and this feature can be monetized. We've got great traction. We're scheduling a pilot project for the largest food service company in the world at the cafeteria of one of the largest technology companies in the world, and their CEO is at this conference. Our second customer, <laughs> we have a letter of intent with the second customer and customer engagement with it yet a third. We have 50,000 locations where we can implement our product in the United States. It's a billion dollar market. We just need 5,000 to get to $100 million in revenue. Our lead customer has 10,000 locations in the United States, and they're ready to implement pending our pilot. With this implementation plan, we'll be profitable in our ninth quarter post-funding. Our deployment timeline is that after the pilot, Next year, we'll deploy up to 500 systems in Q4 of 2014. We'll use that to optimize our software and hardware. Then we can implement 5,000 after that, even more the year after that. The rules of this competition prohibited me from saying how much money we're raising. We are seeking investment. If you're interested, please contact me, Anika, at Mashton.com, and please follow me on Twitter. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Anika. All right, and now to the judges. Yeah. Warren. Well, recognizing the time limitations, you have, I'm always interested in hearing about the moat around a pro product because to have a good business over five or 10 or 15 years, you have to have something that protects you from competition. I'm, I'm not familiar enough with what might be out there as a competitive product, but the more I could learn about what keeps, keeps the competition away, the better I'd like it. <clears throat> Thanks. You did a great job. Uh, the question I would have is, the real estate on our smartphones is so in, so precious to all of us. So I'd like to st better understand. Uh, understand your you, you know you're signing up big companies, big food service companies. But how are you going to get me as a as a consumer to put that app on the front page of my or second page of my smartphone? Great, thanks, Kathy. Teresa, I thought you did a great job of explaining how the product would be used. Um, I would have loved to have learned a little bit more about, out of all the different things that you could have applied your technology to, why you chose this market, why this market spoke to you and your co-founder. Mm -hmm. Great, Erica. As somebody who's gone through the automatic uh, self-checkout in the grocery store, so, you know there are issues that happen, and I think it would be great if you could address some, or you know, proactively address some of those questions that might come up in people's minds around the actual the veracity of the how the product works. Um, just I, I've been in that situation where you have to call the person and you know so it, are you making it incrementally easily easier or are you actually revolutionizing the whole process wonderful thank you so much Anika for pitching thank you give her a hand and last but by no means least we have Arti Ramamurti founder of Lumoid take it away thank you good morning I'm here to talk to you about a revolutionary new way to shop for and try consumer electronics at a really affordable price. I'm Arthi, that's my Twitter handle in case you want to reach out to me. I've worked at Microsoft building products like Xbox. I've then worked at Netflix working with different consumer electronics devices. And then I co-founded a bra company which makes it easier to try and find the best fitting bra without having to go to a physical store where I wrote a recommendation engine to make it happen. So I'm an engineer by profession. Lumoid 
It takes all of my collective experience in working in all of these companies, and it is backed by Y Combinator, which is popularly known as the Harvard of Silicon Valley. So let's say you're going on a vacation. You want to try a really nice camera to take with you. You've heard about GoPros. The problem is you don't want to pay the full price just for the sake of the vacation, a couple of thousand dollars, and you have no idea where to go start. You've also heard about gadgets like the Pebble Watch or a Fitbit or a Fuel Band. You've heard about 3D printers and all the innovation that's happening there, but you don't know where to go start, what to go try, and you're not going to a physical retail store anymore to go try these gadgets, wouldn't it be wonderful to get these objects, get these gadgets at home, but pay a fraction of the price to go try them at home? That exactly is what Lumoid does. We help you discover, try, and buy consumer electronics at a really affordable price. We ship the showroom to your living room. The way we do it and the way we keep it economical and capital light is that we tap into excess inventory. We are big believers in the shared economy, and we tap into excess inventory in used electronic stores and with manufacturers that have excess inventory. How does the whole thing work? A customer comes to us, and they give us a ton of data on what they're looking for. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to track sleep? Are you trying to take photos on a vacation? We recommend the right set of gadgets, gear, and we ship them a box of options. And on our back end, we work with these used electronic stores and the excess inventory stores and manufacturers and get these, ship them in a beautiful box to the customer. They try it out at home from anywhere from $5 a day to about $25 a day. Once you're done using it, you can ship it back and use this as a rental model. We collect data on what you like and what you've tried at home. You can purchase the items, and that is also data that we collect and sell to brands, and they love this data. What are they trying? What are they keeping? What are they returning, and why? And we keep making this better over time. We also have exclusive partnerships with brands like PNY. They are a memory card manufacturer company, and they love using us because this is distribution that they never had before. Where are we so far? We've been doing this for about four months. This is our fourth month of operation. We have over 200 paying customers, 6,000 people on a wait list. We put up a site in mid-July. I put together a website and just hacked it together and put it out there and got so much demand that I shut down the site, put up a wait list, and now we are trickling in people. Uh, we're making pretty good revenue, and one in five customers who try end up keeping the item, end up purchasing it. One in four customers who've tried the product come back to try something else. So this is a really effective, profitable model for us. Our customer acquisition cost is one of the lowest in the e-commerce industry. We acquired them for $6. It's incredibly scalable, and we've tested out different ways to acquire them. And an average customer comes to us to try something for 10 days and pays us about $15 a day to try an item. So the average auto value is $150 today. Why do customers really like us? We understand who they are. We personalize options. We use machine learning to recommend and keep recommending better and better items over time. It helps you discover items that you would have never known existed. We bring the showroom to your living room. You don't have to go anywhere. And we do this at a fraction of the cost that it would take for you to purchase the item full price and then return it, pay a restocking fee, and the whole thing. We want to see ourselves as a destination site for consumer electronics commerce. We are starting with photography, videography, and the related areas around that. Think about cameras, lenses, gadgets around that, memory cards, GoPros, stuff like that. But we will expand this into categories where it is applicable, things that are shippable, that are medium to high value. We are working with different brands for wholesale partnerships. We have accessories brands that are branding and tying up with us to upsell them. We also work with content channels. We have about over 8,000 fans on Facebook entirely through word of mouth. We haven't advertised. Thank you so much, RT. Great job. Don't move. OK, let's turn it to our panel of judges. Warren, take us off. Again, I feel sorry for the, uh, trying to present all of it in five minutes, but I, I'd like to hear more about the capital needs and, and potential margins and that sort of thing in the business, uh, fleshing out the mathematics of it. Great job. Um, I think the rental model is intriguing. I'd like to learn more about that. The, the question or concern I would have is in an increasingly software-centric technology world, um, 
the, the whole hardware side of it is, is, uh, would be a, a, a question of mine. Mm -hmm. I thought you did a great job presenting your early actual data and customer facing data, which is terrific, and um, would love to hear more about your plans um, to uh, access even more customers. How, you know, how will you have both supply to get those people off the wait list, but also how you'll continue to build the wait list. Perhaps there's some magic number that you actually always want to understand that part of your business. This, uh, this is just a very intriguing idea. I think um, you, you have the opportunity to actually improve on the regular shopping experience that people would have in a store. Um, one thing that I would caution a little bit is around the friction of people mailing things back. And um, so just identifying what are the friction points within the process and, and figuring that piece out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arti. You can take your seat. Um, and in a moment, judges, I'll ask you for some final feedback. So contemplate that for a second. But now I turn to the audience. Um, it's time to vote. Now, as you're thinking about who you're going to vote for, remember this is not a popularity contest. This isn't about what you want in your living room. This is a business decision. You are venture capitalists. Think about where your money goes, who's most likely to succeed with your money. Um, with that, on your screens, uh, you will find that if you text the code of your selection to 22 333, uh, you'll be able to register your vote. That's 22333. To review your choices, you have MPW001, Rock Paper Robot. Sproutel is MPW002. Mashgen is MPW003. And Lumoid is MPW004. Now, as you contemplate that, I'll turn back to our judges and down the music, guys. <laughs> we want to hear from Warren first. Uh, overall feedback for our contestants, things to think about. Uh, this is a new experience for me. This, this is not the way I go about uh, evaluating business. Quick, quick, so quick. I, 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 I think I'll listen to the other three. <laughs> OK. Well, let's shake it up a little bit. Erica, not to put you on the spot, but uh, I, I thought everybody did a great job. It's, it clearly, passion is coming through. And that's, um, I think, what you want to see is what's going to sustain somebody's interest in the business. Um, I, I'm fascinated by all these women. It's Thank you. Teresa. So in, in our business, we look for, generally speaking, three things, sort of, you know, the, the entrepreneur, the management team, the market and the market opportunity, and then the specific business proposition and comp competitive advantage, either technological or otherwise. What I would say, I would agree with Erica, all four of these women, and it clearly shows that there were hundreds of applicants, all four were incredibly compelling, excellent presenters, and truly authentic, what we call domain experts in what they were doing, both the combination of their personal experiences and their professional experiences, which gave the story in five minutes or less, which is hard to do, of their journey about why this was the company that spoke to them that they had to start. So I thought everyone did a terrific job with that. Um, thank you. Um, Annika for telling us that you were not actually allowed to cover the third point, which was how much money you wanted to raise, um, although some people were able to talk at least a little bit more about their business model, which I appreciate. And I think that um, uh, probably all of them could uh, do a more complete job, whether about market opportunity or competition, and really spending a little bit more time on that second piece. So next year, we'll give them six minutes. <laughs> Five and a half. OK. <laughs> Kathy. Yeah, well, obviously, they all did a terrific job. And as, as has been stated already, the passion that is just on the forefront, just you know, on, the, on their, their fingertips was, uh, you know, we all felt it. What I really enjoyed is that they embraced technology, they embraced big data, but they humanized it. On, on each presentation, it wasn't just about the technology or it wasn't just about, well, we're going to learn this about them but they humanized it. And so I think that that is always, not all, that sometimes the missing element when we're talking about you know, big data and analytics and technology and things like that. But I also agree that I think they, um, you know, in, in terms of wrapping the, the business element around it um, with that extra minute next year would be good. OK. <laughs> and Warren, any final? Well, I, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd, I'd like to sit down with, for an hour with them. And just, and, and just talk it all through in terms of their aspirations and how they got where they are. I, uh, 
you know, obviously this, this is not a, this is a format that I, I would not use actually in terms of making decisions. <laughs> but but I, you can, I find if you talk to people about their businesses uh, and let them talk it out and a lot of questions, you find the ones with the passion. Now all four of these obviously had a, have a strong passion, uh, but you also find out the ones that actually can put the numbers in place and and and, and have thought it through analytically as well as in terms of of just pure passion and. Uh, so I would, uh, I'd like to spend an hour with each one. <laughs> you all heard him say it. <laughs> um, so with that, I'll tell you that our winner, um, thanks to AT&T, will take home five tablets, which at most of these companies should cover most of the employees, actually. Um, and with no further ado, I will announce our winner. OK. Aha, Sproutel. Thank you very much. And again to our audience, I'll remind you, uh, these four women were chosen from over a hundred amazing entrepreneurs. We have a lot of faith in all of their ideas and we hope that you as a community will too.